Hello guys, R Sharp 3 here today, and we are going to be doing uh, probably the hardest mission in Halo 4, if not the hardest mission in the whole Halo franchise. This is Infinity on Legendary Difficulty in about 22 minutes and 20 seconds. So uh, this is basically when we get reunited with the UNSC, so uh, I really like this mission just for a couple reasons. One, off the start, it's really, really fast paced. You don't have to wait a while before you get to the action, which is a big problem with speedrunning is you have to restart every time and you have the two minute opening to a mission. And uh, that's why one of the reasons I like this mission. Another reason is there's some really fun parts to fight, but there's also a bunch of skips. So this whole alpha section, as they call it, we're just gonna skip it. So uh, right here, we're just gonna go on the vines like I just did. And once you go around this corner, you're gonna jump up this rock. It's kind of hard to see, it's dark, but there's a little, there's kind of some uh, little ledges here. So you're, once you get to the top, you're gonna jump, you're gonna crouch jump up here, and you're gonna make sure you get on this top part of this uh, piece of wood there. Then there's actually rocks here, it's hard to see. You're gonna jump up here. There's a couple invisible walls, you're gonna feel your way through it, sort of. Then you're gonna jump onto this log on the other side, onto these rocks. And then once you see the uh, loading done, then you're just going to jump back down through this crack. And uh, all the enemies in the rest of Alpha are going to be despawned, except for the ones that were just spawned before I went up in the rock. So right here, just making a little loop around. Usually your shields wouldn't go down this low, just the crawler and uh, melee attacking me. That's why I went down too low, but you're fine. If you, You're going to know it works if you don't see a knight there attacking one of the officers, which is usually happening. So right here, there's usually a ton of crawlers, a couple knights and everything. They're gone. We're just going to keep on running through, and uh, that's alpha done in We've got two, three minutes. It's uh, it's pretty simple, so if you guys are having trouble, like that's, that's an easy way to get it done, no problem. You're just going to have to practice uh, getting up there and out of the map, but once you get that done, it's pretty easy. So uh, we're just running along here, and we're going to get up to uh, this kind of big fancy door here, and usually you have to like loop around on this big circle, like vine type deal. But this is actually one of the few parts in the mission that I uh, came up with myself. Um, so here it is right here. Which instead of going up, we're just gonna keep jumping up here. And just up here, you're gonna crouch, walk underneath, walk under this, and then sprint. So uh, there we go. That's Alpha done. And um, there's a lot of skips in here, like that one where we went on map. I didn't come up with that. I didn't find that out. So for, there's a bunch of people that really helped me put this run together. A bunch of YouTubers. So uh, I'll put their a link. Yeah, I'll put uh, links to their channels in the descriptions. So uh, here we go. We just met up with UNSC, and now there's a bunch of Spartans right that we just saw, but they give us two shitty Marines, of course. And uh, believe it or not, they can be really helpful in the next section, so you should try to keep them alive. Take out the crawlers first in this section. I try to take out like the, there's like three little parts in this section, so I'm gonna take out those three uh, crawlers or four, then I'm gonna take out the knight with this shotgun, and then we're going to take out the crawlers again and the watcher, and then leave the knight for last, just because the crawlers seem to target the marines more than the knight and the uh, watcher does. So take out the watcher if I can. There we go, and now we're gonna get rid of the crawlers here. And then once they're done, then we're just going to uh, get out our shotgun and we're going to uh, charge in on the night there. Because when you get back, when you get close like that, just the rate of fire in campaign is really easy for short range weapons because the knights are shooting once every second and it's really easy to get close range on them. Alright, so in this next part, you want to have a precision weapon. You want to try to take out as many crawls as you can. You're going to move up the right side because that's where the knight spawns. So take as many as you can while you're moving up, and you're going to back smack the knight, and then you can either headshot these guys or just use your shotgun either or. That's just going to help keep the marines alive. If you don't care about the marines, you're playing on an easier difficulty, you can just run right by, and you'll make it through, and marines are probably going to die, but whatever. So right here, you're going to pop your auto sentry, and you're going to target all the crawlers and watchers up on the hill here. Like I said, you do want to try to keep your marines alive, they do help, however, if they do end up dying, I figured out a way where you don't need them to uh, get this done fast. This, uh, so right here, we're just taking all the um, crawlers, and uh, so once we get like this basic area done, there's going to be like five or six crawlers, a watcher, and a knight, so uh, once that they're all done, the next area is going to load up when you walk up kind of like behind this like little uh, rock valley here. So take out these next couple and then I like to go back and um, pick up the railgun and uh, 
get a little more ammo for my DMR or switch my light rifle for my DMR. I'm not sure which one I did. Okay, yeah, so I got more DMR ammo. Right here, you're going to pop the auto sentry. Three shots to the head for a watcher is going to kill it, so you got to be really quick so they do not spawn the what, the um, turrets. So you got to be quick or else they will. That's actually pretty hard. Then right here, he ended up dodging it, but normally you can just uh, one railgun shot and then a headshot to the knight, but it worked out anyway. The one thing that I can't stand about the knights is how unfair they are on campaign. Like, they can just teleport anywhere they want. They can, like, what, like, do a slash across their body and all of a sudden they're right in front of you about to hit you. Like, they are, when it comes to campaign, like, they are ridiculously overpowered. It's unbelievable. Like, right here. He just teleported out of the way. Like, that's such bullshit. That's something that 343 definitely needs to work on. Maybe have them only be able to teleport once and their shields go down or something. But they can just teleport around the entire map if they wanted. Alright, so right here. Got rid of them all. We're going to give the Marines the railgun. Because that's going to help them fight them fight the knights off and stuff. Like I said, you don't need the Marines here. It just uh, it just helps you. So what's about to come up here, there's a lot going on. So I'm going to try to talk fast. But uh, this actually is a really good strategy. You can practice it. It's like a, the quickest way to get through this uh, little situation. So right here, we're going to run down, jump down here, and uh, pop the auto sentry before the crawlers can get up to you. Because that's going to distract them because you're going to jump back over them and they won't shoot you. Right here, knight spawn. We're going to hit him in the back. Auto sentry's up so the, the crawlers aren't going to hit you, so you can get there in time. Backsmack him, then you're going to run up here, try to take care of these three car crawlers before the knight spawns next to the box. There we go, knight spawns, whack him really quick. Sometimes when he s spawns a crawler, you, you won't be able to kill him. Luckily I lucked out here. We're just going to keep shooting reload. There's going to be like 10 or 11 crawlers to come down here, throw all your nades, pop your auto sentry if you have it, and then we're just going to do our best I can. This is where the marines help. Now, you can do it by yourself, it's just a lot harder by yourself. And then we're going to kill them all here. I could have been a bit faster here. Usually, if you're more ahead of the game and that, the uh, the knight next to the box uh, actually died when I backsmacked him, then I'd be past this. But right here, we're waiting here, that knight spawn to get him. Then you're going to run down, then there's going to be three more crawlers, and there's one watcher, so make sure you have your railgun reloaded so you can take out the watcher really quick, or else he spawns like ten more crawlers, so that's really important. So, he's the main focus right now, take him out, then we're going to run back up, now there's going to be a knight that spawns right there, usually for quick you can back smack him, but it wasn't a big deal for me, uh, this is what I'm saying with the teleporting just becomes ridiculous, because he had no shields and he just decided that I'm going to teleport, and like, that's not that big of a deal, but that's, that cost me like 10-15 seconds, which, and it's just so unfair, but anyway, we get him here, then you're going to jump up on this rock, and the last knight's going to spawn here, you're going to back smack him, Go get some more DMR ammo, some more railgun ammo, and uh, we're going to move on to the next section. So there we go, and uh, we're just going to move on to the next section. Cortana is uh, in bitch mode, so what else is new? That's basically the whole game summed up. And um, once we're going to go through the wall hallway up into uh, this big cavern where it's going to be a uh, LZ or landing zone, and once we clear that, that's uh, Bravo done. So uh, not not too shabby. We got Alpha and Bravo done in uh, under ten minutes, and then there's this big skip on Charlie, which is going to help you skip like half of Charlie. So I like to try to kill this knight for two reasons. One, just to get him out of the way, and also because when you kill the knight, usually a watcher will come up and try to revive him, so that's an easy way to get the watcher rather than having to chase him around the entire map. So uh, those are the two reasons. Then I kind of like to stay in this cave and uh, pick off as many as I can. I like to try to get this jackal out of the way as well. So I'm just going to over here get this jackal out of the way. I don't know what he was, usually he's a bit farther forward, but that's not a problem. And so like I said, I'm just going to stand back here and try to pick off as many enemies as I can. Uh, after you pick off a certain amount, the uh, Phantom will come in and drop off three grunts and three jackals. Which I think is going to happen shortly, but for now I'm just trying to get rid of uh, all the long range enemies and that one knight. So there we go, and then we're going to get one headshot in. Alright, that's done. So we're just going to keep getting more railgun ammo. There's some on the crate right there, and then also by the jackal. So right here the phantom dropship's coming in and it's going to drop three grunts and three jackals. So before it comes, you just have to try to make sure you can kill as many enemies as you can just so you can stay ahead of the game just a bit faster. So I think that was all of them. And right now, you just want to stay kind of in cover because the turret of the uh, the phantom and the gunners on the side will tear you to 
pieces if uh, you're not careful. So we're just waiting, and then the jackals dropped, and now I'm just gonna wait for the grunts. There we go. All done with that. All right. So now there's gonna be two scatter shot knights. Sometimes it will spawn like right in front of where I'm standing now. Sometimes the spawning's random. Sometimes it'll spawn down to the right, or sometimes they'll both spawn up there. So just gonna long range one with the railgun and then headshot him. And usually one will teleport next to you, so that's why I turned around there. This time he didn't. Like I said, some of this is kind of random, but there he is. And he jumps at you like crazy. You gotta watch though, sometimes he'll jump at you and he'll scatter shot you right away. And normally it's a one shot kill, so you just gotta be careful of that. And there we go, Alpha and Bravo are done in about 11 minutes. And then we have the section with the tank, which we're gonna completely skimp. And then we have the skip, not skimp, skip. And then uh, we're going to. Uh, we have the mantis section, which we're going to skip about half of that with a, uh, it's not even a trick, I'm just surprised more people don't know about it, because I feel like 343 really put it up for you. You'll see what I'm talking about in a second. Yes, right here, you get new gu you get a DMR and an assault rifle no matter what guns you carry over, so it doesn't matter, you can waste all the ammo you want, which I, I didn't, I thought that was kind of stupid, but I don't know why they decided to do that, but I guess just a choice made by 343. Alright, so here's the trick. We're going to run up to this rock here. And uh, there's a little kind of ledge on the rocks too to make sure you jump onto the rock or else you get caught. Then you go jump onto this uh, like debris wing, jump onto the ship here, and then we're gonna skip the loading zone so none of the enemies are ever gonna spawn. So this is what we're doing by jumping through this rock here. And we're gonna do a little. That's all you need to do. We're gonna do a little skip jump. Skip. I can't talk today. Skip jump and move on. And as you can see, none of the enemies have spawned. There's no, there's no towers, no snipers, no grunts with few rods, no nothing, and uh, you can sprint about the same speed as the tank, maybe a little slower, but you don't have any any enemies to fight, so this is a lot faster. Now, this is the only single segment, uh, um, legendary run of this. Nikki, I did it in about 20 minutes or something. He was about two minutes faster, but it was segmented, so I'm gonna consider this a world record. So if anyone sees another single segment run of this, just legendary. Not a lasso or lasso. Just uh, let me know. So here we go. We're gonna get the tank, and the reason that we chose the wraith rather than the ghost is just simply because when you get back into the ship, uh, it's very difficult to kill the hunters with just a ghost, and uh, it takes so much longer. So even though you get there a lot faster, it is uh, it is faster with the tank and just higher percentage uh, to use the tank. So uh, the only thing that spawns in this whole section is that one dropship, but as long as you use your boost correctly, it won't bother you. And uh, right up here, we're just going to boost through the wraith and all like the uh, enemy wraith and ghosts and stuff. Don't even worry about fighting them. As long as you uh, save your boost, cor boost correctly, you should be fine. And uh, so here we go, just going to boost through. Sorry to those Spartans, my bad. And uh, once you get through here, like the... A wall is going to collapse behind you, so you're safe. And here we go. This is uh, the section with there's about two hunters, um, a couple of these, a couple uh, ground for few rods, and a jackal or two. So, like I said, with a ghost, this is almost nearly impossible to without getting destroyed just because there's so many enemies, and ghost is such a uh, unprotected vehicle. What I've been a wraith, it's two wraith hits to a hunter directly to kill them, and you just have to watch out for the few rod grunts because. Uh, they can get crazy, and they really can destroy your tank quick if you're not paying attention. So uh, we've all practiced our strafing multiplayer, so now we're doing it with the tank. So I uh, just keep strafing with the tank back and forth, and you should be good, and you should avoid most of the uh, hunter fuel rod and the grunt fuel rod. Sometimes you will get hit, but uh, I think it takes three or four for you to die. Yeah, that was three, so one more I would have died there. That one grunt, see what I'm saying? Like If you're not careful, they can really uh, rip you apart. So you got to watch out for those, and the hunters are really the two main enemies there. And I thought I got him, but I guess not. Anyway, so uh, we're just going to finish this hunter off, and then we're going to go into the se section with the Mantis. And uh, this is uh, almost moved on to the last part. Got about seven minutes left. So, uh, with the channel, I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do yet, just because I did run through all the campaign missions in Halo 4 and that was really my goal. That's what I set out to do from the very beginning. Maybe I'll do some Halo 3 or Reach, I'm really not sure yet. It would definitely be a while just because 
you know, with every game there's different mechanics. I haven't played Reacher 3 in I don't know how long. I've basically been playing 4 non-stop since it came out. I know a lot of people are saying it's in a dead zone or whatever, but I always find a way to keep entertained, whether it's multiplayer, Forge, Campaign, whatever. I'm, I'm so entertained with it, so it's going to take me a while to learn mechanics, to relearn the mechanics of 3 or Reach, just because with every game it's going to be a bit different. You know, how they shoot, how, different guns, stuff like that. So, uh... If you guys have any opinions on if, what game you want me to uh, start doing speedruns with, whether it's I, can, I have CEA too, I could do CEA, uh, or you could do two, whatever, it doesn't matter. But uh, just let me know if you guys want me to, if you want to see any runs of any specific levels from a specific game. But uh, anyway, back to the run. We're gonna shoot down the door here, and we're just gonna take the mongoose up to this door here. I thought I was gonna turn that a bit sharper. But anyway, that was a little close. I'm just going to hop off here. My mongoose driving wasn't the best. That's alright. We're going to hop off here. And I, See what I'm saying? This isn't really much of a skip. I just figured most people would figure this out on their own. But, uh... Take those two grunts out. Take these turrets out with a rocket launcher. And then we're going to take out these other two, uh... Grunts. With our DMR. And then once we do, we're going to pick up, um... This. Their fuel rod. Because we're going to use that in the upcoming section. And we don't have to fight any more enemies up until the Mantis section. So grab his fuel rod and reload. And this is a little skip. I came up with this on my own, but I know other people have done it. So we'll, we'll, when it comes to credit, that'll be more open-ended. So we're just going to jump around that corner. As long as you time your jumps correctly and you save up your sprint, you'll be fine. I don't think I've ever died doing that. Most of these tactics are all very high percentage because it is a single segment run. So... Here we go, we're just going to sprint over here, and be careful because sometimes uh, plasma pistols, uh, fuel rods, and that turret will take your shields down to nothing, so you just got to watch, wait for your shields to come back here. Here's where the fuel rod comes in handy because we're going to need to save the rocket launcher, take out these grunts. Now, they don't usually do anything, I just don't like to take the chance, so take them all out. And here we go, we're going up the elevator, and instead of running through that entire section with the mantis, we just did it on foot, which is so much faster. So this last section is going to take about 5 minutes, it could have been a bit faster. It's kind of hard to judge because I don't know all the mechanics of the section, if you know, if you just sat around in the corner how much longer would it take, or if you, if I went, or was a little more aggressive, stuff like that. Maybe that's what I could have done better, but it's hard for me to judge in vehicle, vehicle sections, because uh, it's just hard to tell on, you know, which way is faster and stuff like that. So alright, here we go, there's 3 jammers, and instead of taking that with the Mantis, I'm just going to do it with the rocket launcher. So, we're going to take out the two, then we're going to run towards the Mantis to try to get the angle on the third one. I don't I think I did miss it here. Yeah, I think I missed it. But, uh, yeah, I believe I missed it. I'm not sure exactly. Yeah, I guess I missed it, but that's not really a problem, because I'm going to walk down to the left here with the Mantis anyway. It would have been a bit faster if I got that sooner. Not too much of a problem. Now, these drop shits here are basically the biggest problem with this section simply because they take off your shield so quickly and they destroy your man mantis so quickly and there's really nothing you can do to defend yourself so there's one section in this uh... there's one part in the ending here where i'm just waiting for the dropships to drop off on the enemies and i'm just hiding in the corner like outside the mantis because it's just so impractical to try to take down all those phantoms at once it's just it's just stupid so right now i like to stay in this corner just because it gives you cover from the drop ships, drop ships when they drop enemies off in the uh, like the top middle up there where I'm shooting now. Now there's three or four banshees uh, in this section, so you always have to be checking this guy because they really do come in at the worst times. After you're retreating and you know you think your shields are coming back and you think you finally save a ban banshee will come in and banshee bomb you, so you just gotta watch that. Be careful for those. See what I'm saying? Like these these drops. There's nothing I can do. Like it would just be impractical to try to shoot them down, and they take off your shields. And right now I'm just waiting for them to go away. And look how far they're shooting you from. Like I think that's a little unfair, but that's why I'm in this corner, just because it's the best way you can cover from. Now, right when Del Rio uh, says that the didact's searching two times faster now, that's when I'm gonna move up to where I was before, and I'm gonna get out, and I'm gonna be a baby and hide in the corner because. I want to wait for the rest of the drop ships to drop off the enemies, and then I'll just kill them, or I'll just um, attack them after the phantoms are gone, rather than trying to do it while they're all there. 
So I'm just waiting. You see these two drops. If I was trying to kill the enemies now, you figure you have two gunners and you have two uh, of the turrets on the edge of the uh, ship. The concussion rifle turrets kind of would be shooting you and that would absolutely tear you apart in Legendary. So it's just better to do this. And I'm pretty sure it doesn't waste any time. Don't quote me on that. But I'm pretty sure it doesn't waste too much time. It's the most practical way to do it. Alrighty, so now that the ships are gone, we're going to get back in the Mantis, and we are going to just get rid of all these enemies, and you're going to hear Cortana's going to say something like, that's how it's done, or some witty remark, or some shit like that, and then, uh, we're just going to press the little Mac control, and that's the end of the level. Now right here, of course, see what I'm saying, how the Banshee's coming at the worst fucking time? Of course, two of them at the same time are attacking me when I have no shield and my mant is on fire. I don't know how I survived that. I thought I was going to die for sure. That's what I'm saying. You always have to be checking the skies for banshees. And the thing is, since banshees and those uh, the gunners on the phantoms have the same type of plasma round, they look visually the same. It's hard, you know, sometimes you're ignoring because you think you know, there's nothing to do about it. It's just a phantom. Then you look up and it's a banshee and it's too late. So some of the things you got to look out for this uh, in this level. So right here, there she says, that's how it's done, and we're gonna just gonna get out and uh, press this little control, and that's the end of Infinity, and we got it done. Um, get it done in about 22 minutes and 20 seconds. So, uh, guys, this is the last mission. Uh, I'm done for now. If you guys want to say anything, just please uh, let me know. Uh, it's been fun. I know I haven't really had a big fan base or whatever, but I enjoyed it for myself. I like making videos. I like sharing stuff with you guys and. Uh, the small community of people that I have met, it's uh, it's been nice meeting you, and uh, hopefully you see a vid here or there, maybe some campaign tips, maybe some probably some more Forge, but uh, have a good day, guys. I'll leave you with the cutscene as usual. Uh, leave a comment, a like, and uh, subscribe. I'll see you guys later. I want to know, people, is where the hell did those things come from? It's possible that they're native to Requiem, or whatever counts as native for a Forerunner AI. We've never seen this type of offensive reaction from any of the other installations. Other installations? Mr. Lasky. Infinity's mission has been to locate the remaining Halo rings and establish permanent bases to study them for decommission. We got locations up and running around installations five and three, but lately they've run into some setbacks. A science team got zapped excavating a Forerunner artifact. This sensor data is all that was left. Interesting. These symbols are a derivation of the Forerunner glyph system. And our geeks managed to pull some coordinates. I'll give you three guesses where it led. Sir, Gypsy Company is prepped and ready to roll on your orders. Thank you, Palmer. Mr. Lasky, you take point, I want boots on the ground in 60. Captain. This is a first contact scenario, Master Chief. Priority is to free Infinity from Requiem's gravity well and file a threat assessment back at Fleetcom. You mean we're leaving? Sir, Infinity drove the Didact back. He's vulnerable. He isn't the only one. You know, I think you of all people, would appreciate the benefit of living to fight another day. 